My name is Judy Quisenberry. I'm the Executive Director for Valley Baptist Legacy Foundation. Judy, uh, you've been here today at a conference which I'm calling the Digital Divide Conference, but I know it's a, uh, a conference made up of association members for folks that work for municipalities that are involved in, in technology. We're here in McAllen. You were on a panel. Um, tell us, first of all, your, your involvement, your organization's involvement in the Digital Divide and broadband, uh, so to speak, and then the key remarks you wanted to get across at today at this panel. Certainly. Um, as, a, as a funder, we fund four counties in the Rio Grande Valley, but we're also part of a larger group called the Texas Rural Funders. And only two of our counties are technically rural, Willacy and Star, but we see the same issues in between all of our small municipalities as we do in many rural areas. And today, related to broadband, what that means is we're just not seeing the connectivity and often the adoption because of affordability related to you know, people being able to afford the internet. The other thing we have seen, is we deployed a survey to all of our grantees. Um, we did this a year ago. So right after the height of the pandemic, yet we were still feeling the repercussions of what that meant to be so disconnected and our kids disconnected from school, we sent out a survey to all the grantees around the social determinants of health. And we asked them, because you are closest to your vulnerable community, and we're talking about um, you know, very small grassroots organizations that we fund, tell us what the largest problems in your community are knowing that poverty is is the main issue so we had a housing and medication and transportation and you know uh, medical visits and all sorts of issues that we see and broadband was one of them and it came in second to last in terms of items of importance and we think that that is because in the most impoverished areas you know that just can't rise to the top over food and housing and um, you know, a visit to a doctor, and when you have to pick and choose between those things because you can't have them all, broadband is going to be at the bottom in terms of importance. However, I think that we just take broadband for granted. We use it every day, um, and we can't imagine life without it, but yet they, a lot of the people who are impoverished use their phone to do all that they need to do, or they find another avenue in which to do it. But we don't know what all they're missing out on either. So um, that really got me kind of in a deeper rabbit hole around what schools were doing to provide access to their students. And I visited with UTRGV and Dr. Bailey said, you know, we've got some money that we want to deploy. Cameron County, you know, we have students there who are not connected. We are considering putting towers on top of some elementary schools in Harlingen. And I said, well, have you talked to Harlingen ISD about that? Because they also are deploying money for broadband. And he said, no. So we came up with a convening in September and we co-hosted that UTRGV and Valley Baptist Legacy Foundation. The goal being, let's talk about all of the governmental funds that have recently come down through all of the um, pandemic money, I'll call it. I know it has lots of other names. But, um, but we talked about what are you doing, Brownsville? What are you doing, Harlingen, San Benito, school districts, university? How can we partner so that everyone can use part of their money to come up with a cohesive plan to create expanded broadband service? And so I think it was the beginning of a conversation. But what I learned is that a lot of communities think that they're connected. They don't think that they actually have a connectivity problem, that that problem exists with the providers. What they don't understand is that some of their community simply can't afford connectivity or the level of connectivity. For example, I live kind of out in the country and we were paying over a hundred dollars a month just for 25, three. So that's going to be the issue when you live just outside of a city. Well, that's not affordable. So um, I think a lot of, a lot of city leaders just don't understand what some residents face in terms of affordability. So that is one real big issue. The other is, 
you know, I'm surprised that Greg Conte at the broadband office didn't say it earlier because in other meetings he has said, it's going to take a regional approach to be able to bring down some of this federal money. And so to me, the urgent call is to have cities not only work on their own broadband plan, which I think is important, and Brownsville and Harlingen has theirs far as well ahead of the game. Um, I believe McAllen has one and Cameron County is now working on one, which is great, but we need to have a regional approach much like, the, much like they did with the RGV and PO. So that is a, a first good example of communities working together and that was not easily done. This won't be easily done either, but we will all lose if we don't figure out a regional way to bring infrastructure that we all need. And we know that we move from city to city and we commute from here to there. So we really need to view this area as, as one solid region when it comes to this. Um, we listened in on a webinar that was put on recently by the Texas Broadband Development Office and lots of municipalities were tuned in. But I got the sense uh, from the Q&A that a lot of the city administrators, the staff members, um, they're just getting bombarded with information that there's this, this fund available and that pot of money available and they really didn't, they didn't know who to go to. They don't know really what's out there and uh, they perhaps don't know where, know where to go for help. I could be wrong on that, but that's no, the sense I got. No, I think you're exactly right on that. Um, and there are, I, I think one of the places that philanthropy can help is to assist um, in helping or you know, municipalities, other organizations, pay for a consultant to help them come up with those grants. Um, I know that Jordana does that also with her advising company. Uh, CTC Technology and Energy does that. Uh, Connect Humanity does that. So there are organizations who understand what those federal grant applications are gonna require, what the hopefully the state application requires and it's going to take some expertise to kind of come and visit with the region to put something together that makes the most sense. And so why do you think that um, some of the communities in the, in the Rio Grande Valley believe that they don't believe that there's a problem they don't realize there's a problem what do they think is going on in their community that leads them to believe that no we've got we've got wi-fi I, I think the same reason we found that in our own survey it didn't rise to the top. People are not saying it's a problem. They don't have it and they just understand that they're not going to have it because they simply can't afford it and I don't think that they know that they should have it and that they deserve to have it. Mm -hmm. So they're not hearing from the local residents that, hey, this is a problem, we need this. Right. And, you know, with limited resources, they're dealing with a lot of problems. We know that drainage is a problem. We know that having law enforcement is a problem. We know that wages are an issue. And in the Valley, they're low. They need to be picked up. There's a multitude of issues that cities have to deal with, and they're important. This is just another important issue they have to juggle. In, in this panel that you, like you said, you, you were with Jordana, Jordana Barton, who's been um, a real incredible resource for for the for the valley with her knowledge of this subject and she has helped with the early work in far and Brownsville to get their their uh, broadband initiatives going but um, the interaction between the two of you uh, it, it was said there that um, also, people don't realize this is an economic development issue that uh, we will not attract new industry to our region if we have not got the fastest internet available. That is true. I mean, I think industry is going to require fiber in particular. Again, it's future proof. It has the ability to shift speeds really very simply. Not e it's not an underground you know, technology, once it's in the ground, it can stay in the ground and work for 40 to 50 years. So it is a big investment up front, but it will last. So, I mean, you get what you pay for. So I think it is important that we look at fiber as the basis for our infrastructure, and that's gonna, that's gonna attract companies here because they're not gonna come if they have to connect to cable. So if the communities do not have fi the fiber network in place, they're not going to attract the best 
businesses. That's my thought. I don't think they will. Because I think they'll go to other places in Texas that have it. Any ideas? You, you said that there should be a regional, there should be a regional approach. Not only that, but there should be some entity uh, where everyone works together, and such as we do nowadays with transportation, with the RGV MPO. Any ideas who should lead that effort? Could it be the council of government? I think the COG is a, is a perfect organization to do it. In Brazos County, that's. That COG has 11 counties, I believe, that they're responsible for, and they did that large fiber ring. So, so that model exists, and, and they're poised, you know, as the leader of all those mayors and, you know, city leaders to be able to pull them together to do that. So that particular COG is doing well with this? Yes, in Brazos County, yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so we, we have a good model to look at. Judy, is there anything else you'd like to say on this subject today? Um, I think really philanthropy is poised to be a part of the solution. Uh, I think there's a lot of funders out there that are already at the table talking about the importance for me, telehealth, and you can't have telehealth on 25-3 because that's a streaming service and you've got to be able to really see that doctor on the other end. We have some models of telehealth in the Valley that are working well, but they're in small pockets. That is an area that, that helps us in providers. We have workforce shortage issues, but telehealth helps bridge that. So there's so many things that I think philanthropy can help with, but we need cities and, and elected officials to really come to the table and understand the issue and then help find some solution to it. So what speed does the Valley deserve? Oh, the, the new minimum, I think, is the least that we should get, which is, I think, 100 over 20. So that, that would be the minimum. Well, thank you so much for today's interview. We've learned a lot, and uh, we will cover the rest of the conference and, and, um, and learn more, we hope. So thank you very much for today's interview, and perhaps we can keep in touch in the future on, on your um, organization's work in this field. Certainly. Thank, thank you. you.